so good you. Oh, hello. It's the fun party in the front. I love it. Ah, hello, hello, hello. Hi. Good to see you. Hi. <laughs> you got here this party has been going on for six months already and arriving after the first month is more than fashionably late now for those of you who are exhausted from your travels and don't know where you are or even when it is let me help my name is King Ahash Verosh <laughs> The most feared and mispronounced ruler in ancient Persia. <laughs> Persia, the only country named after rugs. The year is 454 BC, before clocks. You are in my palace, and I'll promise you one thing, the jokes aren't gonna get any better, so adjust your expectations now. If you're wondering why I'm throwing this party, well, let me cross up stage and tell you. In my first three years, my empire spread from India to Ethiopia. I think it's gotten big enough. That's wisdom, not myopia. My subjects all seem happy. Yes! There's peace throughout the nation. We have reasons to rejoice. So join the celebration. We have reasons to rejoice. So join our celebration. For months and months, we've had the wine and shish kebab and goose. Many of our guests are tight. And our morals are loose. And as for me, as for me, as for me, I'm a leader and a lover. I like crowns because I'm a hat guy. Later, I shall my wife. I'll pretend that I'm with that guy. Everyone who's anyone was invited to this party. Over there is quite a guy who goes by the name of Mordecai. He said two guards were plotting a royal assassination. Now the guards are resting into plots. And I got an invitation. He got an invitation. He has reasons for elation. Over there is one of my ministers. He knows how to mingle, knows how to mix. He's ruthless, cunning, and sinister. Short of the foreign politics. I don't come from royal blood, worked my way up from the mud To the king I'll pretend to cater and my name I'll tell you later He has cunning, he has fun, and he is a total smug And as for me, as for me, as for me I'm a leader and a lover, sexy eyes and sexy toes too Later I shall my wife I'll pretend that I'm with those two. There are ambassadors and dignitaries from all four corners of this flat surface we call Earth. Not to mention our immense palace staff, including guards, assistants, the royal wine steward, and the royal food taster. I think we have a job opening. In short, everyone who's anyone is here. Isn't that right, Mordecai? Well, I invited my niece Esther, but she's not much of a party person. People are confusing, emotionally bruising. When I'm home, I can't go wrong. And I'm writing my first song. And though I'm not the type to gloat, I finished my first note. <clears throat> Do you... Catchy, isn't it? 
if she ever finds her boy, she'll have reasons to rejoice. And as for me, as for me, I'm as powerful as can be. I'm a leader and a lover, and that's not just my opinion. Later, I shall, my wife! I'll pretend I'm with a minion. Hello, it's good to see you. A frog in the front row, I love it. Hi, Elmo, right here. Hello, hello, hello. good guest. to see you. Hi, good to see you again. Hello, hi, hello. Knuckles, 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 thank you. And a best of all, we're together. Together, together, together. Like an in person. So thank you all for coming. We're glad you made this choice. We have reasons to, many reasons to. We have reasons to rejoice. Ah! Oh, I hope this party lasts another six months. Party's over. Aww. Aww. Okay, before we end, Queen Vashti, dance for our guests. No thanks. I'm not sure if you heard me correctly, but dance for our guests was not in the form of a question. Now dance. I'm not in the mood. You dare say no to the king. Yes, I dare say no to the king. What do you think you're doing? I can't do this anymore! Who knows what our parents agreed to when they put us together, but nobody consulted me. You realize all the most important people in Persia are here? I know. That's what makes being obnoxious so rewarding. Your Majesty, if the word gets out that you allowed the Queen to refuse your command, then all the wives in Persia will feel entitled to refuse their husbands. Um, uh, uh, I'm uh, uh, not comfortable with marital squabbles or shellfish. <laughs> I think I'll go. Uh, Queen Vashti, uh, the people of Persia know how strong I can be. Why, with my bare hands, I signed a document sending our soldiers into battle, and we won. But just so they know, I can also be magnanimous. I will give you a choice. Dance or die. Dance or die. It's your choice, tap, foxtrot. What happens if I dance? <laughs> then we will celebrate later in my bedchamber. I choose death. Oh, well, your majesty. If the word gets out that you allowed the queen to choose death, then all the wives in Persia will feel entitled to choose death. So you need to make it sound like her death is your decision and not hers. Um, um, Everyone is watching you. That's because they can't believe their eyes you're actually king. Oh, okay. I make a law that says all the wives in Persia must obey their husbands under penalty of death. So there. Now, with the power granted to me, by me, dance. Come on, you can choose. Box step, Charleston? No. That's it, you're dead, totally dead, and it's my choice. So there, guards! You can't kill me in the first act, excuse me. <laughs> Why not? Because I have a run of the show contract. Guards, take her away. Ooh. In the morning, you will be hung. And if I could say the same about you, we wouldn't have this problem. Oh. You obnoxious, insolent, hostile, demeaning, nasty. I kind of miss her. She was like family. <laughs> oh. What am I going to do now? I need a queen. Your Majesty, if I may make a humble suggestion. If it's a good one, I'll try to remember your name. Let me scour our great nation. I need a queen, and you want to clean the kingdom? Let me and my guards find the most beautiful maidens in the country, and let them vie to be your queen. 
A beauty pageant. I like it. How will we know they're maidens? If you want, I can examine them. Uh, we'll have an honor system. In one month, there shall be a beauty pageant. <laughs> Make it happen. Um, remind me of your name again? Trust me, your majesty. By the end of the show, everyone will know it by heart. Okay. Have ourselves a pageant with you girls from C to C. We'll each win our first prize. And the first prize will be me. And we'll have reasons to rejoice. So the king's army searched through all of Persia to find the most beautiful maidens in all the land. They skipped neighborhoods popular with sailors. A few days later, in a small home in the Jewish section of the capital, on an otherwise ordinary day, Mordechai! Are you home, Mordechai? Mordechai! I just had the strangest dream. I was eaten by a whale who spit me out, and I landed on a burning bush. <laughs> Sometimes I think I know more Torah than is good for me. Oh, Mordechai, I went to the market, and the most horrible, terrifying, horrendous thing happened. They're out of gefilte fish? No. So, you got gefilte fish? I forgot to get gefilte fish. <laughs> you mean to tell me that you forgot to get gefilte fish and something even worse happened? The king's guards came up to me and told me I, I, I must participate in the king's beauty pageant. Must? They said I could either make a completely voluntary choice to participate in the pageant next week or be killed. What should I do? Well... Based on my understanding of the Torah, being killed is not good. But I don't want to be in a stupid pageant. I just want to stay home and work on my song. I've written a second note. Would you like to hear it? <laughs> maybe later. You always say, maybe later. I listened 40 times when you were trying to decide the first note. Who knew there were so many notes? Oh, Mordechai. You're my uncle, my guardian. You are wise. You always see the big picture. I am blessed with good peripheral vision. <laughs> what should I do? Enter the contest. But I don't want to be queen. And why not? Uh, well, for one thing, the king isn't Jewish. True, but... How he... will we raise our children? Well, I can just imagine our son saying, Why do I have to go to Hebrew school? Dad's a pagan! <laughs> Is this the same Esther who found flaws in every Jewish man I've tried to match her up with? You raised me to have high standards. You rejected a rabbi because he worked weekends. <laughs> when I meet the right guy, I'll know. Esther... If you are chosen queen, you must keep being Jewish a secret. And how do I do that? Take a don't ask, don't tell approach. If the king doesn't ask, don't tell. What if he asks? Then lie. I am not good at lying. Esther, maybe this is providence. Maybe the source of all true wisdom wants you to be queen. The source of all true wisdom didn't even remind me to get gefilte fish. If you become queen, maybe one day you can help your people. I'm not so thrilled with my people. In the market, they're always pushing and shoving. Uh, the women gossip. The shopkeepers put their thumb on the scale. You're exaggerating. Does this look like a pound of carrots to you? No, they're not perfect. They're still your people. I don't see why you're so worried. Our people have a good home here in Persia. What's the worst that could happen? Ah, youth. I hope you never learned the answer to that question. Besides, if our people need help someday, they have you. You saved the king's life. I'm sure he'll always listen to you. Kings have very short memories about indebtedness. That's how they stay king. 
You really want me to become queen and spend the rest of my life submitting myself to the king's desires just in case one day maybe it'll help our people? I would never want you to be forced to do something against your will, but if it could help our people. Aren't I a person too? I got to think this out. I need, I need to go someplace quiet where I can think. Where are you going with that fishing pole? Where else? Lake Gefilte. <laughs> I forgot the bait. <laughs> Just want to stay home and write my song. One song. One song that might entertain people and move people and maybe change the world for better for the rest of history. Preferably with a good beat. Do, do. Find the right note. Find the right word. Maybe my life would feel less absurd if I knew my song. What is my? Why am I here? What is the purpose of my life? It's not at all clear. I don't understand this thing called life. I have no command over this thing called life. I'd like to demand one thing from life. Show me my song. I do all my chores. I cook a good meal. I get through the day and yet it doesn't feel real. Marry some guy and raise a family. Is this the only path I get? There's no room for me. If I were queen, my life would be easy. Every need met except the ones in my soul. I don't want a life that feels so lifeless. Being a queen is not my goal. I yearn for the notes. I pray they come soon. Maybe I'd know my place in life if I knew my tune. What is my song? Why am I here? Every choice feels so demeaning. I just want one moment filled with meaning. What is my song? And so the king's guards continue to search through all the empire to find the most beautiful maidens. Supervising this mission was the most devious and corrupt of all the king's ministers. One of the most evil characters in all of biblical literature. A booable, hissable, contemptible villain. And, and his, his name, name was... was not so fast. <laughs> Let them earn it. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> you're not here because of Esther. Admit it. You're just here to boo me. Well, fine by me. Spotlight, please. You say your life is tough. Don't I know it? Every day is filled with misery and pain. You wish things weren't so rough. Boy, I know it. You work so hard to suffer so. And where's the gain? If you want relief, I offer you a little advice. One who enjoys life and is filled with voice. Well, here is your scapegoat. It's not to be debated. You need a bad guy. I'm here to be hated. My name is Framing This Song, and I love to be booed. 
We all know hate feels great. Let's admit it. It gets the juices flowing and makes us feel strong. Hate's a juicy date. Come on, admit it. Love conveyed by hate can last a whole life long. So clear your throat, take a breath, get ready to vent. How often do you get to shout your discontent? Hate with the right group becomes a social event. Don't be tame, take your aim. The reason you can proclaim I've no shame in the fame of my name in. My name's in flaming this song, and I love to be booed. The moment's almost here. Can't you feel it? The moment to let loose and show me all your bile. Don't hide that hate inside. Go reveal it for thousands of years. Hate's made life worthwhile. Deplore me, abhor me, just don't ignore me. Cause I need to top all the assholes before me. My name is... Hey man! More! More! Feed me! Feed me! Oh yes! Oh yes! Yes! Now wasn't that a religious experience? And I love to be booed! Thank you, Thank you so much. the Lake of Filter Chamber of Commerce. And by the Persian Federation of Horseradish Growers. Because if it wasn't for gefilte fish, no one would know what to do with horseradish. Your Majesty. My men have gathered the most beautiful maidens in the land. Now, these men you had find these maidens, were they trustworthy? They were all extremely trustworthy. With two exceptions who have since been transferred to the Department of Unix. Good move. And now, would you like to meet the three finalists who hope to be your queen? Yes, I would. <laughs> Our first finalist from the Persian Highlands is a sweet young maiden who lists her special skills as knitting, weaving, crocheting, and slaughtering bald sheep. Oh. Your Majesty, may I introduce Farzana? Your Majesty. Mm. 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 <laughs> I hope I am pleasing to your eyes. Both of them. Now, I have one question for you. Do you promise to answer it honestly? Of course, Your Majesty. Would you like to be queen? Would you like to be Biblically known, would you like to be plucked like a flower, grab the seat of power and sit on my throne? Would you like the best job in the world, not including mine? Would you whine or would the stars align if I made you my queen? You're scratching your head. Do you not know the answer? Your Majesty, I definitely know the answer. I would love to be queen. <laughs> that would be very nice. I hope the royal physician has a cure for lice. Oh. I would love to be queen and to wear the queen's crown. I think some of my guests are moving lower down. I assure you that I really mean for this job I am keen. I'd be the best queen you'd ever seen if you made me your queen. Oh, thank you, thank, thank you. Oh, okay, thank you for that. <laughs> Who else do we have? Our second finalist from the Persian Gulf 
is also a sweet young maiden who lists her special skills as years in the hospitality industry and welcoming visitors to her golf. Your Majesty, may I introduce Mazeppa? Your Highness. Mmm. Mmm. I hope I'm pleasing to your eyes, among other parts. Are you sure she's a maiden? I heard that. <laughs> Your Highness, I happen to be a fourth generation virgin. Fourth generation? My great grandmother was a virgin, my grandmother was a virgin, and my mother was a virgin. <laughs> then how were you born? Immaculate deception. <laughs> well, I have one question for you, and I hope you'll answer it honestly. My tongue knows only the truth. Your Highness, ha la 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 Well then, would you like to be queen? Oh, would you like to be inches from this ruler? With relish. Would you take a deep pleasure beyond any measure and buff me oh. like a jeweler? Oh, in the buff. Would you like the best job in the world with free room and board? Oh. Is this a job you could climb aboard if I made you my queen? I would love to be queen. <laughs> It has great appeal. <laughs> I eat so many turnips, <laughs> like every single meal. Turnip saute and turnip flambe. Turnips in a jar and turnip tartare. A sear turnip roast with poached turnip on toast. Braised turnips glazed with a turnip mayonnaise. Turnips with mustard and turnips in custard. If I had a boat, I'd have turnips full of mustard. I assure you, I made you so serene. I want a decent cuisine. I'd be the best queen you'd ever seen if you made me a queen. We have another finalist, right? Yes. Our final finalist is also a sweet young maiden who lives right here in the capital. And she lists her special skills as it's blank. It's blank. Not to worry. I'm very popular with the illiterates. <laughs> Your Majesty, may I introduce Esther? Your, your high majestic could? Hmm. 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 Why have you not anointed yourself with uh, perfumes and lotions as the others have? I don't know. If those are your priorities, your majestic highlands, then maybe you should have a pageant for perfume makers. <sighs> I don't believe capable of thought was on our list of priorities. My apologies. Well, I have one question for you, Esther, and I have a sneaking suspicion you'll give an honest answer. I'll try. Would you like to be queen? What's a nice way to decline? Would you like to be queen? It's all about the phrasing to decline but still be praising. Would you like to be queen? I must be diplomatic and not cause him any static. Would you like to be queen? I don't want him to throw a fit, but I don't know how to admit Would it you would like be the, the best job in the world? world? My reply must be perfect to the letter. Would you really, really like to be queen? I think I could have said it better. <laughs> I meant no thank you, your holy smokiness. I see. It's just that, well, I'm sure either of the other two finalists could please you just as much as I. You got that right. Ooh. <laughs> 
I like your humility, Esther. Do you not think you're worthy of me? Oh no, your royal highness. I think I'm as worthy as anyone. Oh, if he kills you, can I have your dress? <sighs> Humble, yet strong. Esther, if you were queen, what would you do to please me? I don't know. What would you do to please me? <gasps> Why, I, I would be me. Well, then I guess I would be nothing less, nothing more than me. You've never worked in sales, have you? <laughs> You're a very intriguing woman, Esther. Trust me, I am not trying to be. Can I trust you? What can I say, your heightened royality? If I answer yes, that only means you can trust me or I'm lying, so I must answer no to give you an answer you can trust. Okay, I'm smitten! What? I really thought my Esther, answers would- Esther, you're the would... first person I've met who hasn't tried to impress me! That's so impressive! But- Esther, you've won the contest! But- I'm sure you'll be honest, true blue, and loyal. I hope I can get him to go see a moyal. You're my queen, that's what I conclude. Now I'm royally screwed. Excellent choice, your majesty. I like how you arrange the pageant and how you save the best for last. I appoint you my new prime minister. You could not please me more, your majesty. Trust me, I don't intend to. And to make it official, you may now wear my signet ring. Wow. With this ring, I now have great power. Sorry, just having a moment. All right, pageant's over. Everyone's dismissed. Well, I hope there's an after party with a buffet. Except for you, you stay. Yeah? So, uh, looking forward to the honeymoon? <laughs> I, um, I guess so. Esther, has anyone ever told you that lying is not one of your special skills? I tried my best. I'm sorry, your majesty. It's just the two of us. You don't have to be so formal. You can call me by my name. I will. Ahash. Ahash. Ahash Veyrosh. Ahash Vashrosh. Ahash Veyrosh. Ahash Queerosh. Ahash. Ahash Veyrosh. Ahash Roachclip. <sighs> Now I know why everyone calls me your majesty. <sighs> Esther, I know it might take some time to get used to being my queen. Well, you are a bit intimidating. <gasps> Thank you! I've worked so hard at that! But that's the public me. The private me can really be quite, um, quite, ah, uh, oh, what's the word? What's the word? Oh, I've, ah. Uh, I've only heard it two or three times in my life. What's the word? No one says it in the palace. Uh, nice! But that's the private me. I can never show that to the public. Why not? Because there are some people who confuse niceness with weakness, and I must appear strong! Well, you've certainly mastered loud. <laughs> I'll thank the royal vocal coach. Esther, if it takes you some time to prepare yourself emotionally for the queenly duties, I'll understand. It doesn't have to be tonight. Doesn't have to be next week. Doesn't even have to be this month. Thank you. You're my... Uh, Ahash. Ahash fish sticks. We'll work on it. You may go. Thank you. Oh, and one more thing. There will come a night that I will beckon you to the royal bedchamber. And I will expect you to fulfill your queenly duties. Between now and then, I have one favor to ask of you. Learn to feign enthusiasm. <laughs> There's a human being under that crown of yours, isn't there? Good night, Esther. Good night, your... Uh -huh. Ahash. Ahash. I'll work on it.
Would you like to be queen? Everything's fine in Persia. Everything's totally fine. Life's a sweet wine in Persia. Everything is totally fine. Like an easy, slow inertia. Everything is totally fine. While Esther adjusted to life in the palace, she focused on her songwriting. I read the first note. Looked so good on parchment. Esther doing fine in Persia. Esther doing totally fine. Happy as can be in Persia. Esther doing totally fine. Even when off key in Persia. Everything is totally fine. The king, eager to consummate his marriage, beckoned the queen. The queen says she has a cold. Tell her to stay warm. A week later, the king beckoned her again. The queen says she has a fever. Tell her to stay cool. <laughs> a week later, the king beckoned her again. The queen says she has diphtheria. Tell her to avoid this! The king is doing fine in Persia. The king is doing totally fine. Waiting patiently in Persia. The king is doing totally fine. Horny as can be in Persia. Everything is totally fine. Mordecai, knowing the Jews had one of their own in the palace, relaxed by going fishing. I caught a big one! Mordecai's fine in Persia. Mordecai's totally fine. Catching lots of fish in Persia. Mordecai's totally fine. Happy as a canish in Persia. Everything is totally fine. Meanwhile, Haman. Amass more and more power and more and more money. My wife is very pleased with my success. My in-laws are impressed with my success. My whole family is thrilled with my success. I've learned an important lesson. Whoever said money can't buy happiness didn't have enough money. Ooh, our bad guys you would find in Persia. Our bad guys you would totally find. Making lots of bread in Persia. Our bad guys you would totally find. As, as long as, as you're not dead, dead in Persia, everything is totally fine. Speaking of which, Queen Vashti remained dead. It's not fair! I have a run of the show contract! Good luck. You're dead. I'm calling my agent. You're dead. Then I'll call him collect. Yes, yes everything's fine, fine in Persia. Everything is totally fine. So peaceful if it's strange in Persia. But everything is totally fine. As long as you're not dead in Persia. Everything is totally fine. <laughs> Meanwhile, the new prime minister used the power of his signet ring to declare many new laws, including that whenever he walked the street, anyone he passed had to bow down to him. Good bowing. Excellent bowing. Simple bowing. Choreographed bowing. No bowing. No bowing 
Don't you know the new law? Yes, you. I know the new law. Then bow. I cannot and I will not. If you have back problems, I can recommend a good chiropractor. My back is fine. Bad knees? My knees are fine. Weak ankles? My ankles are fine. Over trim toenails? No. Do your bunions make you wobbly? No. Do you or anyone in your family suffer from dizziness? No. Shortness of breath? No. Kidney stones? No. Gallstones? No. Milestones? No. Flintstones? No! If you have arthritis, I can recommend a good doctor and dance instructor. Doctor and dance instructor? Yes, he's a rheumatologist. <laughs> I kind of agree with you on that one. <laughs> I'm in perfect health. You're Mordecai the Jew, aren't you? My name is Mordecai, and yes, I am a Jew. Well, Mordecai, all the other Persians bow before me. What makes you think you can disobey the law? I will not bow before any man. So it's a gender thing. <laughs> <laughs> I will not bow before any man or woman or anyone. What about puppies? No. Come on, you're never walking down the street and you see a cute little puppy and you go, oh, aren't you the cutest little thing? Oh, look, I'm bowing. Bow wow, bow wow, bow wow. Bow, wow. Bow, wow. Nope. <sighs> How to get a Jew to bow? How to get a Jew to bow? How about if I lift my garment and show you my golden calves? Sorry. Well then, Mordecai the Jew, I will give you a choice. You can bow down now, or I will choose a day, and on that day, I will destroy, exterminate, and massacre all the Jews in Persia. Don't you think that's a little extreme? I like to think it's proactive. How about instead of destroying us, you just resent us deeply? <laughs> Not enough. It's worked for other cultures. <laughs> enough. You have 10 seconds to bow, or I shall use the power of this ring to turn my threat into law. Uh, 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 I Nine need seconds, more time to think eight, this out. Seven, There's so much to six, consider. I'm not ready. Five seconds. Spotlight, please. What would you do if you were forced to face to sum a simple choice but to break a holy law, one that makes me who I am? Actions have ripples, even ones we never mean. Actions have ripples that can never be foreseen. Four seconds. What's one bow anyhow? What's all this fuss about? Maybe no one will find out. At least my people will be safe, at least for now. Actions have ripples we never can predict. Actions have ripples. If I bow, who would convict? I would. Three seconds. Laws I've studied all day long. Laws that teach me right from wrong. That have guided every act. That have kept my world intact at least till now. And if I bow, who am I? Actions can be holy, courage takes nerve, actions must be holy. If I bow, who do I serve? Two seconds. How can I face my people if I bow? Can I face them if I don't? Who knows what harm looms if I do? Will my people all be told? Mordecai bowed and so must you. Bow down, you Jew! Actions have ripples. They define the world we live in. Actions have ripples. Will I ever be forgiven? One second. I feel history on my shoulders, palpitations in my heart. I feel my body leaning. It's tearing me apart. I reach inside me. 
I'm plagued with doubt. I reach beyond me. There's no way out. What would you do? What would you do? What would you do? Time's up. What should I do? So let me see if I've got this straight. You refuse to bow, and as a direct result, there's a decree to annihilate and eradicate all of the Jews of Persia. And you think you can make up for it by wearing a sackcloth? <laughs> I thought he was bluffing. Where did you get this? At a Saks outlet store. <laughs> Men and their egos. I agree. I can't believe the ego of that despicable, detestable Haman. Thank you. I didn't mean him. I meant you. How could you do such a thing? It is a sin to bow down before another person. Sometimes I think Jews are concerned with every sin except self-righteousness. Esther, your people need your help. A decree has been issued and sealed with the king's signet ring that on the 13th day of this month, the people in every province of Persia should eradicate the Jews. You and only you can save your people. You really know how to lay on the guilt, don't you? <laughs> Esther, you need to approach the king. I've been doing my best not to approach the king. I've had a headache. I've had measles. Last time the king beckoned me, I didn't know what to say, so I told him I'd come down with a severe case of onomatopoeia. <laughs> Did he believe you? I think so. He sent me a basket of figs with a note, I hope these help you move your vowels. <laughs> Well, tell him you recovered and would like to see him. Why don't you talk to him? You saved his life. I saved his life once. Kings like to forget such things. Men and their stupid egos. I dream that one day love and reason will triumph over ego and hate, and maybe then the world will finally know peace. And I dream one day someone will invent fabric softener. <laughs> But that day hasn't arrived yet, so we must deal with the day that's here. Will you speak to him? One can't just approach the king. I know. Host a feast for the king and the despicable Haman. You're just jealous because I have a dessert named after me. And at the feast, invite the two of them to a second feast where you convince the king to nullify the edict. And if he asks Esther, why do you care? Tell him you're a Jew. But not until after he's had a good meal. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Do not imagine that just because you're safe in the palace, you of all the Jews will escape with your life. Even if you live. Your heart will die with your people. My people. Your people. Does it include our neighbor who made chicken soup for you when you were sick? Well. Does it include your cousin who helped repair our roof when it leaked? Then he finished off all our chicken soup. Your people. Does it 
include me. If I attempt to save my people, and I'm not promising I will, before I do, I want you and every Jew in Persia to fast for three days and three nights. Why? You're asking me to risk my life. I want the divine to know that even if it's just me entering the king's chambers, that our people are in this together. I'll spread the word and tell our people to fast. Uncle Mordechai, uh, I've made great progress on my song. <laughs> Six notes, <laughs> and they're really, really good. <laughs> Except I'm not so sure they're in the exact right order. I have faith in you. I don't know what to do. Oh, yes, you do. You're just scared. Queen Vashti? Speaking. But you're dead. I have a run of the show contract. <laughs> and you need me. I must be dreaming. <laughs> you're not dreaming, but it's possible that uh, the omelet that you had for breakfast had some fun mushrooms in it. <laughs> Whatever. Why are you so glum? If I don't say the exact right words to the king, all of the Jews of Persia will be killed. And if he gets upset that I approached him, I could die too. Just say to yourself, <clears throat> if I perish, then I perish. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> Spotlight, please. Big enough for two. I see you're nervous. I see you're scared. You're being asked to do something that nobody else has dared. The stakes are high, and you might die. But out of terror, you must climb. Just remember this. What? It's your time. It's your time. Destiny is calling and it's calling just for you. All you need to do is all that you can do. Trust that it's in you, cause it's your time. Why me? Why me? I didn't cause this problem. I want to run and hide. I'm feeling kind of nauseous deep inside. Here's a secret I'm disclosing. I'm not choosing to be chosen. You want a heroine? See Frozen! Why me? Nobody thinks they're ready. Nobody feels prepared. You may be feeling totally impaired. You got that right. Give fear a little space, but don't let it rule your head. Take it from one who's dead. It's your time. You're entitled to your opinion, but I wish you'd go away. I'm starting to lose my hair, and half of them are gray. I'm not cunning, I'm not clever, I'm not up to this endeavor. My time's not now, and it's not ever. Not me! Nothing I can say is going to convince you, is it? I'm glad you've noticed. Then I'll just have to enlist a higher power. A power that can be judgmental and severe. But that is never, ever, 
ever wrong. You mean... I mean the audience. I'm going to ask you, is it her time? And if you think it is, just reply, yes, it's her time. Not yet. Yes, it's her time. Are you ready? Yes. Is it her time? Yes. That was excellent, but to be sure, we're going to try it one more time. Is it her time? Yes. Bravi, maestro. Is it her time? Is it her time? The audience has decreed, yes, everyone's agreed. We know you will succeed. It's your show, so take the lead. Is it her time? Well, if the audience thinks so. Is it her time? Now they're just being redundant. <laughs> just say it. Say, it's my time. It's my time. Don't say it like it's your bat mitzvah speech. <laughs> say it with conviction. It's my time. With a little more oomph. Um, it's my time. With more pizzazz. It's my time. With a little more spirit. It's my time. And a little jazz. It's my time. About five more times. It's my time. Four more times. It's my time. Three more times. It's my time. Two more times. It's my time. One more time. I'm scared shitless. That's just one more sign that it's your time. A week later, at the Royal Palace. After a good meal. The King and Esther are alone. And at least one of them is full. Now in this scene, there may end up being some, shall we say, delicate negotiation. So if my name gets mentioned, I would prefer it if nobody booed. Thank you. Glad you got out of your system now. That was indeed a fabulous feast, Esther, even better than the first. And I'm so glad you finally recovered from chicken pox. Smallpox. <laughs> whooping cough. And its obscure variant, whooping sneeze. <laughs> Thank you, your majesty. Ah. Ahash. Ahash. <laughs> Ahash veal roast? <laughs> You're getting closer. She's not that good. <laughs> so, to what do I owe this uh, deluge of delicacies? Well, to be honest. And which I know you always are. I was hoping you might consider a humble request. Not so fast. <laughs> we get it. Your Majesty, this woman isn't the sweet little innocent she claims to be. My lieutenants have discovered that this so-called innocent is a spy for the Jews. Is this true? Yes. Spy for the Jews? You? You? Shmatahari? Um, you know Yiddish? I know Abyssal Yiddish. You know Abyssal Yiddish? I know a little Abyssal, not a big Abyssal, maybe Abyssal in a peck. <laughs> Where did you learn Yiddish? One of my nannies growing up was Jewish. She was a sweet, kind woman. I told her once, I think of you like a mother. She replied, then call more. <laughs> Well, this isn't a sweet and kind woman. Her special skills include seducing you with food and her womanly ways so you'll grant her request. Doesn't that infuriate you? Actually, I find that kind of hot. So, what's the request? The Jews of Persia are in grave danger, your majesty. So? So, you can save them. Why would I want to do that? 
Think of how sweet and kind your nanny was. Oh, oh, that's one person. I would never judge an entire race of people based on one person. That would be prejudice. Excellent mansplaining, Your Majesty. Thank you. Your Majesty, I've written a song. <gasps> the urgent matters I must discuss with you, Your Majesty. The song will have to wait. But if you just listen... The king said no song. And his word is law. Maybe some other time. Now, about these urgent matters. No! Not some other time. Tired of people saying, later, Esther. Some other time, Esther. There's something truly horrible that's about to happen, and you need to listen to me now! Please. Ah, uh, since you said please. She's trying to manipulate you, your majesty. It's one song! What difference can one song make? It better not be schmaltzy. I'll do my best, your majesty. <clears throat> do... Do... Why people there? Um. Um. You're doing great so far. It's your time. Spotlight, please. My people. I struggle with my feelings about my people. Such people, these people, my people. They annoy me. If I question their beliefs, they don't enjoy me. And sometimes I'm afraid that they'll destroy me. Scary people. These people. Then suddenly they'll act kind. They'll open their hearts and care. They'll treat you with warmth and love and make you realize that they're the answer to your prayer. My people. They're no better or no worse than other people. And sometimes they're a curse like other people. They're people, my people. They upset me. At times they're mean and over analytical and selfish, hostile, rude, and hypocritical. Tough people. My people, their self-righteousness drives me crazy. They work too hard, then they're lazy. They find loopholes in all the laws. But just when I fear judgment, they're forgiving of my flaws. My people, I'm totally confused about my people, but there's a truth that I've refused about my people. Lovely people, my people. Sometimes they can be so brave. At moments they really shine. Sometimes they give so deeply. They show that being human is like Touching the divine. Now you're a person. I know that you're a king, but you're a person. And you want to do what's best of that, I'm certain. For your people, all people. So don't refuse this plea from your people. You won't lose seeing all your people you can stop all these threats that scare us you can stop all these hates that tear us so please King Ahasuerus you said 
at my name. Save my people. Your song melts my heart, Esther. You mean that? If I were any more verklempt, I'd be verklemptomaniac. There's one thing I don't understand. Who is trying to eliminate your people? Your Majesty. Psst. I volunteer to create a team to investigate this matter fully. We'll find out who the culprit is, even if it takes years. Good idea. It's your time. Your Majesty. Huh? I know who this person is. <gasps> no, you don't. You're risking your life. And, and his name is... Oh, don't tell me. Let me guess. <laughs> is it someone who's a sailor or a hemming hawing tailor? Is it someone in the harbor or a careless hairless barber? Is it a heaving, hoeing farmer or a knowing, thieving charmer? Is it a clawing little diplomat or a pawing little putty tat? No, no, it's none of those people. Or a cat. Is it someone named Cats? No. It's... Don't tell me, let me guess! Is it dozens of my cousins who are obnoxious and uncouth? Or a lazing, lispy lowlife who likes to play it loose? Is it a cheery showbiz kiddo? Or my late food taster's widow? Or a tightwad hoarding cashios who's nutty as pistachios? No. It's... Is it someone who likes tunics? Is it someone who likes eunuchs? Is it a snooty, fruity, cutie? Or a beauty who's off duty? Is it someone good at fishing? Is it someone good at dishing? Is it vegetable or mineral or modern major general? No. Don't it's... tell me! Let me guess! Is it someone who's a Buddhist or a shapely nudist flutist? Is it someone who's an alien or a future Episcopalian? Is it someone good at alchemy or someone in the balcony? Is it someone laying low under a seat in the first row? The first row is fine. The second row, I knew it. It's none of the rows, it's- Don't tell me, let me guess. Is it the royal mathematician who I learned can't do addition and who drove me to distraction with incompetent subtraction? Is it someone who is vicious or ambitiously malicious or suspiciously officious or who likes to do the dishes? <laughs> yes, that's him, that's him, that's him. I can recognize him anywhere. Um, the kitchen is this way. Thanks. <laughs> If you really want to know, it's... Is it a fellow who's emphatic and who bellows when ecstatic? Or is mellow and pragmatic or at times mellow dramatic? Is it someone superstitious? Is it someone who's fictitious? Is it she or they or he? Oh my God, could it be me? Stop it! I can't take this anymore! It was me, Heyman! Oh! you either. Why would you want to destroy these people? They mean you no harm, and their gefilte fish is delicious. These people have their own laws, which they consider more important than they do yours. They are a threat to your sovereignty. We must annihilate each and every one of them. Then you should start with me. I don't like that. Too late. The decree has already gone out to every corner of the empire sealed with your signet ring. It cannot be revoked. Well, that's easy enough to fix. I'll just write a new decree giving the Jews the right to defend themselves against all enemies. Yes, I know it sounds contrived, but it's in the Bible. <clears throat> 
Now, if you'll just hand me back my signet ring so I can make it a law. Sorry, it won't come off. <laughs> Not to worry. I'll just call the royal locksmith and have him unlock your finger with a hacksaw. Ooh, look, it came off. <laughs> Thank you. You have done great harm in my name. Guards, how could you do something so cruel, vicious, and contemptible? These are a few of my favorite things. <laughs> this man who worships fear and hate as if they were gods, take him away. In the morning, you will be hung. And if I could say the same about you. What? Don't go there! <laughs> take him away. Wait! Oh, I wish. <laughs> Do you have any last words? Just this. Penny! <laughs> There's more of me in you than any of you wish to admit. <laughs> See you at the after party. How? How could I have given him so much power? He's such a, a nebbish Knezer. Thank you, your majesty. Of course, now we'll have to find a new prime minister. Those, those aren't easy to find. You could always hold a beauty pageant with all the cutest ministers in the country. <laughs> you are more playful than you first appear. I kind of like that. You could always appoint Mordecai. He's wise and loyal, and he did save your life. Uh, he's certainly qualified, and I did have a dream about him last night, but... But... But what? But he's... Jewish. So? Well, so, having one member of a minority group in my inner circle, that's trendy tokenism. Having two, he says, is, uh... Is representation? You know, someday someone will write down the story of how a reserved but clever woman found her courage and melted a monarch's heart, and they'll call it... The king and I. How about the book of Esther? Mm. Yeah. The book of Esther and a hush with sweatpants. A hush with swear jar. The book of Esther. Thank you. And thank you for everything what good is it being a king if you can't occasionally act like a king do you like being king oh it can be difficult at times which is why whenever possible i like to take the weekends off <laughs> really once again there will be peace throughout the land I've had a yummy meal, and I'm standing next to the most wonderful, wondrous woman in all of Persia. I'm getting very excited. You know what that means. I would like that very. Time for another party! <laughs> so let's end with a party on a note that's fun to chime. We have reasons to rejoice. And I'm glad that you're on time. Let's eat and drink and drink. No problem! I added a gefilte! There is peace throughout the land and a woman I adore. Who could ask for more? I have reasons to rejoice. Kings no longer scare me. I like when they dare me. Never knew I could be strong. Now I know I have a song. I have reasons to rejoice. We got rid of someone sinister, let all our people sing. Now I'm the new prime minister that has a pleasant ring. I inspired a young queen, helped a woman hear her roar. Now I'm singing in the last scene. I 
should thank my agent more. Let's not forget our bad guy, who wasn't very clever. Now he's dead from a swell head. But my name lives on forever. We're glad you joined our party. You made a joyful choice. Let's hear our happy ending. We have reasons to. I'm a leader and a lover. And I won't take any vision. No! Later I shall. I hope I rise to the occasion. We, we have reasons to, many reasons to. It's a season to rejoice. Rejoice. It's a season to rejoice. this moment. First of all is the arranger of all the songs who grew the seeds into beautiful melodies, Michael K. <laughs> and the other person is the director of the play, who, who I put trust in, who led us, who shaped us, and who taught me how to do this. Ladies and gentlemen, the wonderful Gary Slavin. <laughs> Happy Purim, everyone. Good night, Purim. Good night.